Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Thematic Podcast. I'm Craig. I'm Daniel. And this is season three. Season three. And so glad that you're with us. If you missed uh, season one or two, then make sure you go find those because it's, yeah. I mean, I would say pretty solid content, Daniel. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're growing, we're changing, you know changing and evolving so to speak and it's getting better and better but season one's really good yeah um we're hearing reports uh from how this has impacted people it's pretty cool i heard some yeah. some friends say hey our whole family at the homeschool family we all watch the thematic podcast during the bible time mm -hmm. part of the day so <laughs> you guys are awesome and yeah, i think legit. i got a question from you so we might address that one yeah but we're getting questions from all over the place TikTok, Instagram, our mm -hmm. website, thethematicpodcast.com. You can submit a question there or friends or whatever. Um, and so actually this one came just from a friend that I know who texted me. And I'm going to read the question just exactly as he wrote it. And that's what we try and do as often as we can. Yeah. Um, and then we sort of parse it out based on what the questions that most people are probably asking. And I think something like this is a lot of people are asking these questions. So he asks this, are we actually called to tithe? Or go and give everything to the Lord, like when Jesus tells the rich man to sell everything. Mm. So there's a lot of questions in here that I know people are asking, like, do we have to tithe? Do how much do we have? Do we have to give to the church? Who do we? Who can we give to? Do we have to give it all? Do we have to give everything? Mm -hmm. So. Where would you like to start? Oh, this is big. Well, let's start. This is big. These this are is big, the, yeah. both these two alone are just two um, big questions. Well, but. let me let me start with a Okay, I have I okay, I'm just going to start. The reason that we are called to tithe is really about faith more than it is about Jesus getting your money. Okay. Um so I want to just to start with the like concept of it. It's a simple act of obedience. Um the world system of control is money. And so it's a way for you to participate in God's kingdom and have faith that you can live more stably on 90% of your income than you can on 100%. You will find a ton of anecdotal evidence of Christians who serve Jesus that their entire lives changed both fiscally and otherwise when they began to tithe. Mm -hmm. I tithe. I think you tithe. Of course. Tithe means a tenth. That is literally yeah. what the so word means. Foundationally, yeah. That word, it, it literally just means a tenth. Yeah. And so I just want to establish what it is and what why I believe the purpose is, is it's a simple act of obedience and um, it's really easy. It's easy to calculate. It's easy in every way. And um, um, there's, it, it was there established something, in the Old Covenant. Yeah. There is something that's beyond a tithe though. Yeah. It's called an offering. It's called offerings. Mm -hmm. And yeah, some of those are like what's a free will offering. So it's kind of like, yeah. Hey, if you want to, if your heart is stirred, yeah. there was a beautiful place in the Old Testament where it was like, hey, if anybody wants to give towards this, then give. And then there was a point where they're like, hey, you guys are giving too much. We have enough to build the thing. You know, <laughs> we can build wouldn't the that thing. be a beautiful Amazing. Yeah. Uh, situation if there's always more than enough and it's like, hey, we don't need any more. You yeah. Know? <laughs> so I think we could, should to kind of talk through the, the spirit of this episode. We're going to need to go through some of like God's sort of regulatory like what he ex expects or what he says that he expects without um, sort of poisoning the well on the spirit of the law. Right. So we should talk about the letter, the but then, yeah. The that's the tension well. for a lot of people is like, is there, yeah, in the New Testament, in, in the church now, is it like, is it a rule or a regulation that we must do? Or is it like, mm -hmm. yeah, this is a good principle and you should, but you don't have to. Mm -hmm. And... If it's or e and either way, is there a certain amount of money? Yeah. So yeah, there's a so lot. There's a lot of areas. There's a ton there. Yeah. <laughs> so it was established in the old covenant, mm -hmm. but it was actually like um, a lot of people believe that it was established before, before that. Before the law. Before the law. Yeah. So the mosaic the law is one thing that was established like by Moses. This is like you see it in the movies. He's got the tablets and the Ten Commandments, and there's that's the moral law, and then there's a ceremonial law that comes through that. Um, but before can I give that, a little history? Real of course, quick? yeah, yeah. I'm probably going the wrong you way. Know, you like, started the, no, no, I no. Know. You're going Go exactly the right way, but just so people understand it because we did an episode on yeah. people not understanding really the flow of the Bible. Yeah, so, go for it. So really God started a personal relationship with humanity through Abraham. 
and then Abraham had Isaac, and Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel, and then his 12 sons created the 12 tribes of Israel, and then the, so that's the nation of Israel. And now this is long before, then they end up in Egypt, and they, they first are thriving there, and then they become slaves there, but for 400 years they're there, and then they cry out to their God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to deliver them, and he sends this guy named Moses to deliver them. And as they're going to the promised land, this is when God shows up in a new way, even different than the way he showed up to Abraham, and he speaks his heart, these rules and these commandments of how this people is to be a people of God set yeah. apart. And so to, to govern themselves, to govern yeah. themselves. And so there's Very ceremonial different. law and there's, there's moral laws and there's also civil laws. And so all that takes place under Moses's leadership. So when you hear the term, the law in the Bible, or, uh, if we say it, what would be considered the first five books, of the old, old Testament, the, the Torah, Pentateuch. even though a lot of that the Pentateuch or the Torah, even though a lot of that's the history, but the law given is from Moses. So that's kind of the timeline. Mm -hmm. And so even before Moses, Abraham meets with Melchizedek. Melchizedek, or Melchizedek, which I would say is a Christophany. Okay, awesome. Would you agree with that? I think, um, yeah, I'm open to that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know and for it, sure. I don't know if it necessarily... Christophany means an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. Yeah. Yeah. So either way... Either way, he's a there's type this picture, or a Christophany. He's a type or, yeah. There's this picture of him giving a tenth to this person. Yeah. Which in some ways is not like, well, okay, that's not explicitly proof it's of a tithe, or, yeah. but it's, there's something there. Well, and they broke bread and had me he brought the bread and wine so there's a lot of like like amalgamation of the symbols of what would become like prescribed in the law sure sure you know in a Ab in abraham's interaction with the yeah. prince of salem yeah okay so so either way whatever takes place there it's most definitely commanded correct in the law under the moses law. okay keep so, going so so now we have this this tithe that's prescribed or said you should do this in the law and um but a lot of believers today so um, that's probably you. And what spurs this question is like, does that still hold up? Because I read all these scriptures saying you are no longer under the law. You are under grace. Jesus fulfilled the law. I don't mm -hmm. find a New Testament scripture in the epistles or the book of Acts that, per, you know, says I have to give 10%. Right. Um, really, there's just one from Jesus that's not really prescriptive. It's more acknowledging. Although mm -hmm. it does say, so really there's only one passage from Jesus. It says, you tithe your mint your dill and your cumin but you neglect the weightier issues of the law love justice and mercy and then he says you should have done the former without neglecting without the latter. neglecting the latter so so there is We're quoting the same translation <laughs> there's a definitely a wink at jesus definitely does not say you don't need a tithe he says you should no have. you should have you should have but you should have also done these other things right okay but so now really but the then if you're jesus if you're a stickler you'll be like well jesus was living in the old covenant he hadn't died yet so people will say that. We could do a whole episode on that. Yeah. I personally don't believe that anything Jesus taught was in the context of the Old Covenant. I believe everything he taught was in the context of the kingdom yeah. he was bringing. Yeah, cool. Do you believe that? Um, I, I haven't thought about that well, before, we should to talk be honest. About that yeah, that'd be a good one. A lot of people, uh -huh. some people say that like the Sermon on the Mount was all speaking to Jews and people living in the Old Co Covenant. Yeah. And, and to me, I just believe that everything he taught was within the, the framework of the kingdom that he's bringing. Th that's probably, and I mean, I, don't I, I, would, I wouldn't here, have but... any problem with that. And I bet it's true, but I just haven't like actually studied that. But but here's what I would say is even the law itself, while, um, you know, we know that the law was actually perfect. It was our flesh weakened by like our flesh's imperfections that couldn't uphold the law. Mm -hmm. um, and so grace, the new covenant had to come because of our inability to keep the law. My point in saying that is I think the law is just an expression of a life lived under the new covenant will produce the fruit that the law would have you know produced that's the idea so i don't need a rule saying don't cheat on my wife when i love my wife i don't right. cheat on her right. this is why jesus can say i write my law on your heart the picture is like i used to write it on tablets but now under the new covenant right. i write it on your heart right like because we have a real love relationship you are filled with my spirit now you don't need all the exterior rules because you are a fountain of my love and when that. you have that you have it all so that's the spirit i right? think you're touching on in so many ways the essence of what this podcast that I, our idea behind it, the idea of being theomatic, that our, our theology is 
is automatic that we there's a sense of knowing what God's heart is and and what you're touching on here is that you're boiling one theological subject back down to the foundation of a relationship like a marriage and I I think that that's one of the best places to start in talking about almost any subject yeah. is like yeah if if we're in a marriage relationship or theologically speaking the the a covenant wedding fetus <laughs> wedding is still going to happen but yeah. we're betrothed to yeah. our to our Christ yeah. but uh, maybe we could do an episode on that but yeah. um th- this is a relationship with God not just How a much do I have to hang out with my wife just just want to know the exact amount exactly it's like, yeah what are you talking well, about you're not asking those questions <laughs> when it's about relationship you're, you're right. only asking those questions when it's about rule and law exactly. and so when it comes to money it's the same with with your wife or with your kids are you going to be like well do i have to provide for my kids, how my, much my do household? I need to give them? Really? Yeah. Like, like what's I, the? Yeah. Is it ten? Can I get away? Can I do less than ten percent? Yeah. When like, you're enraptured like, in love, you're like, whatever it takes, they will get. Yeah. yeah. Like I want to provide for my household and yeah. my family. And if we believe the church is also our household, or more importantly, God's household, come on, and God's family, mm-hmm. we should want to provide yeah. for them yeah. as well. Yeah. And and I love I I so love and don't... hate the term we should want because um I that's frustrating for people that don't yet want it. And we're not saying you don't have the time to get there and understand, but I think wanting to want something is a great sign of health, a healthy relationship. When you want to give, that is a great indicator that you're really in love, that you're really in it. And so use that as an indicator of relational health. Um, The the interesting thing about tithe is in the Old Testament, um, it says that you can test God in it. It's I, the only thing. I was going to say, I don't think, I have never found another passage where God commanded us to test him. In fact, even Jesus Correct. in the wilderness, he's Sect- like, do not, do not test, not test the Lord your, Lord your God. God. Yeah, yeah, like that's commanded. Mm-hmm. He quotes the scripture telling us not to, but God himself tells us one time, yeah, in, test um, me in this. Malachi, Malachi chapter Malachi four. Melchizedek. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in Melchizedek the, 7. <laughs> it's actually the last book in the Old, in Testament, the Old Testament before Jesus comes. Test me, said, test me in this if I won't. see if I will not. Yeah. Open the windows of heaven, heaven. and pour out blessing. Yeah. Shaken down, pressed together, like your cup will be so filled of the blessings from heaven. And what we know is that everything in the new covenant is a more mature, deeper, more overflowing expression of God's Old Testament promises. So if that's in there, imagine what's in store for you when you're a giver. So good. So many people are like, well, yeah, the new, I, you know, the new Testament and grace, it really thing, you know, it's easier. And it's like, in some ways it's like, bro, it's actually the opposite <laughs> it's of that. It's a deeper commitment. Jesus doesn't make things easy. He doesn't lower the bar. Never. Jesus actually raises the bar, but there's grace there for you. Yeah. He doesn't just say no longer don't murder somebody. He says, don't think of somebody with anger in your heart. Mm-hmm. He doesn't say don't commit adultery. He says, don't look at a woman with lust in Beyond your heart. Beyond that, he says, love your enemy. Yeah. He <laughs> like, raises what? the bar, but he yeah. gives us grace to fulfill yeah. it. Um, he gives us grace to fail in it, and he gives he gives us charismatic gifts from grace oh, to to yes, do it. Yes, it's amazing. Yes. We get it on both sides, you know. Yes. Like you have grace to fail, and you get grace to win. Yeah, power to power, power to dunamis accomplish power it. of yeah. the Holy Spirit, which is why the Holy Spirit is so important because we Man, can't excited we can't episode. actually accomplish what He calls us to. Yeah. Up. So, uh, so this is why I would say in the New Testament, it's 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 not even really the right question to say, well, well, can I give less than ten percent? It's more like really the heart should be Holy Spirit. How much do you want me to give? Is it a hundred? Is it 90? Is it 80? Is it 60? Is it 10? You know, because mm-hmm. and the, that's a great heart. And what happens to, to address Joseph, your second question is when he's talking with the rich young, young ruler, he asks this one guy to give a hundred percent. Yeah. And now I would, I would just point out because you asked about this, that I personally think that the key to this whole passage, and if you don't know it, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll quickly I'll quickly read it for you. This guy comes up to Jesus, says, "Good teacher, what must I do to have eternal life?" He says, "Well, why do you call me good? There's a whole message in here. <laughs> There's none good but God alone." Uh, he said, "If you would enter eternal life, keep the commandments." He said, "Which ones?" And Jesus says, "You shall not murder. You shall not commit. Shall not commit adultery. Shall not steal. Shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself." And the young man said, "I've kept all these." What do I still lack? Personally, I think Jesus wasn't really saying, hey, you just have to do these five or six things and then you're good. He was saying, hey, these are the rules and we're both acknowledging you still know you're lacking something, even though this guy is like, I've, I've done all that. Yeah. 
But he's like, yeah, you've done all that, even whether he was lying or not. Yeah. No, he was being sincere. I okay. Believe. He's yeah. being sincere. A lot of people. He hadn't murdered anyone. A lot of people would say, well, he, he, yeah. So either way, the point is you recognize even if you accomplish those laws, you're still lacking something. Right. And so Jesus says to him, if you be perfect, go and sell your possessions and give to the poor. He says, one thing you lack. One thing. One thing you lack. Go and sell your possessions, give to the poor, and then come and follow me. Mm-hmm. And so I believe that what Jesus was saying is that there's one thing that we need, and it's to follow him. Yeah, correct. I'm glad and, you nailed that because I believe that's what it is too. Yeah. So for that person, the money, the, the that riches, was the encumbrance. Was the, encumbrance was the thing stopping him from the exactly one thing. Exactly how I read Selling it. Selling everything was not the one thing. Come on, preach. And that's why he doesn't ask every single person. Preach, preach, that's preach. That's why every Christian in the world does not has zero pennies because <laughs> this isn't the commandment to everybody. The yes. principle is the same though. But if the commandment to everyone is follow me. Follow me. That's the one thing. So for yeah. you, if there's anything. We've never talked about if this. If there's totally anything agree. that's stopping you from the one thing, which is following Jesus with your whole life. Cast it off. Sell it, cut it off, kill it, get Boom. rid of it right now. If it's money, so be it. If it's food, if it's mm-hmm. that relationship, if it's that addiction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so it's not like everybody should sell everything, give to the poor. It's everybody should get rid of anything that's stopping them from the one thing. And if you're doing the one thing, by the way, when it comes to money, if you're doing the one thing, following God with your whole heart and you have money, then then start using it to build the kingdom. Come on. I have a friend that says money is not good, but it's good for the good that it can do. Yep. People say, well, money's the root of all evil. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The says Bible the says love the of love money. of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And so money really in essence is amoral. It's yeah. neither moral nor immoral. Yeah. It is just a thing, and you can use it for moral, great, godly purposes, or you can use it for great evil. The choice You're is yours. You're on fire right now. Oh, I'm loving it. We're preaching, dude. It's good. So okay, yeah. so so should we should we loop this thing back yeah. around? Yeah. Does just a, it, just a simple question? Does a Christian need to tithe? A Christian needs to give. Okay. Mm-hmm. A Christian needs to give. Oh, should a Christian the tithe? The fruit of a Christian's life is being a giver. Absolutely. A great place to start is giving a tenth of your income or tithing because that is what was the minimum required in the old covenant. And I can't imagine we wouldn't want to go beyond it. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Can you, can you receive that? Yeah. (laughs) That's what I believe. Now let's cover, can I tithe my time? Can I tithe my, um, you know, talents? Um, what do you say on that one? Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I, I just, I probably wouldn't use the word tithe myself. I, I just... I don't really think about it in that framework, an offering maybe, but I just think mm-hmm. my life is of service to the king mm-hmm. and I don't keep track of the hours per se. And say, So well, if I'm not giving my money to the kingdom. Oh, instead I'm going, of money. I'm going to just serve and that will count as my tithe. What do you say about that? I would say, I would say no. I would say definitely, definitely giving of your time, mm-hmm. your talent and your energy Mm-hmm. is extremely important. It's a reasonable response. It's just, yes, it is. <laughs> what I what I say to, to like my kids and is, hey, if you make money, whatever comes in, we give to God first of that and the first 10% at least. Mm-hmm. And so if you're giving your time and not working, then Put it like this. If if this month you made no money, mm-hmm. then no, you don't need to give any money. Mm-hmm. Now, you can give an offering if you have some in the bank, but you don't need to. It's yeah. just what comes into you. So if you said, hey, I'm I'm not going to earn any money this month. I'm going to quit my job, not earn any money. I'm going to serve and give my time. That's cool. You're serving, and then you're not making the yeah. money, so you're not, you're not tithing any money. Okay, but if you're making money and you're tithing your time, you, you need to, you should, you ought to tithe on whatever. Yeah comes into well, and, your and I and I have there's a, I think there's a reason so the reason is time is what God gives you God gives you time you just the enemy doesn't give you time the Lord gives you time so you should serve it's your reasonable response give your time yeah he, he gave you talents we have a parable he's the one that bestowed your talents he gave you. you the gifts these are things that you're just using that he gave you money is the world's agreement there's a spirit to mammon there is, in order for your worldly resources given by them to be useful, they need to be redeemed. It's the principle of first fruits. So it's different. There are actually two different economies. Time, God gives wow. money, the world gives. You need to redeem it with the first fruits. Wow. And, but and that's would... how you rebuke the devourer in the Old Testament, by Ooh. the way. 
So if you but want you your money to go longer, that, tithe. You would also <laughs> say that, that, that I've never really heard it put like the way you just put it, but you would also say in a sense though that God has given you every dollar that's in your bank account. Yeah, for he, it is God who gives you the ability to get wealth. Sure. It says in Deuteronomy. Yeah, the difference is so wealth doesn't so so I agree. So well, money buys food and resources. Food can drop from heaven. It happens in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Money, you can't shake it. It is the agreement that the world has with each other, which is why it's treated separately. Because hmm. God, if you had no money, God could still feed you. That's true. Yeah. That's why uh, That's why I want to make the distinction. You used a word a, a minute ago that I want to loop. Yeah, I want to loop back to just in Go case anybody it. doesn't know. So what <laughs> does that, what does that, what did you mean when you said mammon? Well, how I understand the word mammon is it's the spirit well, talk of money. About, do you remember the verse? Uh, Matthew. Yeah, it's in the Sermon on the Mount. It's this, Yeah, go for it. Refresh my memory. I'm, yeah, I, was, I don't remember uh, exactly where it is. Somewhere in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7, Jesus says, You can't serve two you masters. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve both God. And then some translations say both God and money. But what he actually says is you cannot serve both God and, and mammon. mammon. And mammon was really a false god it was it, it like literally was a deity the deity of money or wealth that, that if people you would gave worship. to if you made small sacrifices the the um what's it is it's not stipulation but it, um superstition was that if you gave it a little it would give you a lot hmm. it's literally like a mirror of the promise in the old testament that when you give god a tenth he supplies hmm. pressed down so it was a true false god yeah trying to replace everything the enemy does is just a counterfeit system totally to get you something that God would have given you anything anyway, if you'd done it God's way and no strings atta attached because his promises are yes and amen. Yeah. So if you want money, do it God's way yeah. and you'll have the right amount for the right call for the right, you know what I mean? It'll be, yeah. and there's no, no strings attached and money won't own you. You'll own it. Yeah. That's the heart of why we should tithe. Yeah. Tithe means 10. It's real world. So, but you should be a giver. And I'll just go one step deeper with this mammoth thing, although we don't have a ton of time to get into it. But just to, that's why we have multiple episodes. To, yeah, just to per, <laughs> and, 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 and to perk your interest because we don't really want these episodes to be the be all end all for you. It we hope that it will provoke something in you to yeah, be like, I'm going to research more. But he used the the term spirit of mammon, and there's different opinions about this. But a lot of people believe that that there's a a spirit or an essence to that mammon is not just this idea of it's not just a statue yeah it's, it's not just a, a statue it's like that there yeah and 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 i think that if you really consider our society you'd recognize that in one way or another this is true that people are gripped yeah by this love of money this desire this unsee it's why like billionaires keep going after more when literally there's some people that have so much money like like so so much money. Jeff Bezos, <laughs> it is it is literally not worth his time to bend over and pick up a hundred dollar bill off the ground because it takes more time for him to pick that up than he would have earned just continued walking. Like that's how <laughs> I mean it and yet he's still making more money. People mm. like that they're still making more money. And so I would drive ten miles to pick up a hundred dollar bill. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, when you're I'm a like, teenager, okay, you'll drive a gallon. Ten, <laughs> ten miles just to get some, some Taco yeah, Bell at four meal late problem. at night. For so, sure. but the point is, like, money so grips people. This is why the scripture says it's the love of money, or maybe even the the spirit of this money that's the root of so many kinds, All of, kinds evil. of evil. So, I would encourage you if yeah. if you sense that there's a, a greed in you or even a spirit or something that has a grip on you that's that's making you not want to be generous towards the king of kings, yeah. the one that's given you every breath in your lungs, mm -hmm. and the one that made you wake up on the right side of the bed and the right side of the dirt this morning. Come on. Right? The one that, like that. that is responsible for every degree of wealth that you have and the clothes on your back. Why would we not want to be generous towards yeah, him? Yeah, I and love so, it. That's the spirit. Can I say, I have two little tiny things as you we close us out. Um, just to be, so this is prescriptive. So use your own judgment. 
speak with the Holy Spirit about it. But here's like what I'm teaching my kids is that we give a tenth as the minimum because that's our heart. And we do it because of the first fruits offering is, you know, a tenth and we want to redeem our money. That's what we do. Um, where should you give that tenth? I believe it's you're sowing it into the kingdom. I believe you should give that tenth to your local church, wherever your your community is, where you're getting fed. Um from the uh, good preaching in the pulpit and community every week. If you want to give to other ancillary ministries, like I'm giving to Logicos or things like that, you would do that out, out of your offerings, hmm. right? So if you're prompted to give, that's a great opportunity to go beyond the minimum if the Lord stirs it in you. And um, the, then, then I would say, do you tithe your time? No, you serve the Lord with your time because he gave it to you and maybe consider trusting God with your money and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. Test him in it. Give him 30 days. You know, no, give him 60. You need a couple pay cycles. <laughs> give him 60 and just watch what happens with Beautiful. your money. Just watch. That's what I would say. We would love to hear from you. If, if any of you, especially if you've never done this before, if you step out in faith, Watch God show up on your behalf, and we want to hear your testimony. So shoot us a message on the thematicpodcast.com. And if you have a question that you want answered, maybe next season, then send it to us. Or any other way you want to get connected with us, find us online, the thematicpodcast.com or on Instagram. And uh, we're so thankful that you're with us today. Please share, consider sharing this episode and rating and reviewing us on whatever platform you joined us on. And we'll see you next time. Rock and roll.